Hey there guys, welcome to my mini teach for today, the last one for the week. Where are we going? This is an important topic. We're going to look at what causes spiritual blindness from an address that Jesus made to the, to the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day in John's Gospel. So if you're wondering, hey, what's this mini teach thing? Um, I've been doing them since last August. They're great because they're just a small, short power pack of teaching in less than 10 minutes. All right, you ready to go? So I'm reading this and I'm going to read some footnotes in this as well because this is a really interesting passage of scripture. We don't read around it and we don't actually understand the context of, of what it is and, and, and what, what's being spoken here then we can misunderstand God. And I think it's very important for us to not misunderstand the heart of God when we read things like this. Um, so much had happened in Chapter 12 in John's Gospel. This is coming up to the end of his ministry. At the beginning of the chapter, he is anointed um, for his burial. So we know it's only, it's only days out. And then um, once we go into Chapter 13, we're moving into the time of Jesus in the upper room with his disciples, uh, which is quite a long discourse. John's Gospel has a lot more of that than the Synoptic Gospels do, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So I absolutely love John's Gospel. It's my personal favourite. Let me know in the in the comments if it's yours or if you prefer another Gospel and why that's your favourite Gospel. It's totally fine to have different points of view, by the way. But we want to talk today about what actually causes spiritual blindness because if we don't look really carefully at this text, we can... You know, we, we can see this probably more as a sovereign act, and it really isn't. We have choice, free will, absolutely free will here in um, in where we go with this. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's read the text. It is John 12, and we're going to read verses 37 to 41 in the New King James, which says, But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. It's tragic. That the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. So what are we talking about here? In, in, um, in Isaiah 6 verse 1, it says, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. The house was full of his glory. Now this encounter, Jesus, uh, uh, sorry, Isaiah actually saw Christ's glory, Jesus' glory, in about the year seven, 700 years before Christ, right? So 700 years earlier, Isaiah the prophet had seen this and he spoke of him. That's what it's talking about. He spoke of him, capital H I M, him, Jesus, high and lifted up. And then from chapter six of Isaiah, I mean, Isaiah is a really long book, right? So 60 something chapters in it. A really long prophecy um, proceeded from that place. And probably the most well known prophecies about Messiah actually come from the prophet Isaiah which I absolutely love. But what is being said here? Is God actually blinding? Is he actually causing blindness? Is he shutting their ears? Is he, is he hardening their hearts? Come on, guys. What do we know about the nature of God revealed in Scripture? Even think about Pharaoh. All right. The Scripture is very clear that Pharaoh hardened his heart. God said this, said this, spoke this, and Pharaoh hardened his heart. And Pharaoh hardened his heart. And Pharaoh hardened his heart. And what eventually happened? Pharaoh had hardened his heart so many times that the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He was like, right, well, you're not receiving the message. So I, I, I am just reinforcing what you've already chosen. So I am giving you what you've already chosen. Now, um, in this, I'm just reading from the footnote here of this passage that Jesus was speaking to the religious leaders right before they're going to crucify him. And he's talking to them about, you know, basically, you know, you haven't you haven't heard. Um, actually, it's not. This, I need to be more specific. It's not Jesus speaking here. This is part of the commentary. It is that um, 
he had performed these miracles and John is writing in his gospel that it was to fulfill the words of Isaiah, which are given here. Now, the early church father, St. John Chrysostom, said this about this particular passage. It says, Isaiah's prophecy does not mean God causes spiritual blindness in people who would otherwise have been faithful. This is a figure of speech common to scripture, revealing God as giving people up to their own devices. Think about Romans 1, 24 and 26, which is really strong language, right? It's like, you know, you chose this, so I've just given you over to it. Um, what is meant by he has blinded is that God has permitted their self chosen blindness so they've chosen it just as pharaoh did and a couple of examples have been here pharaoh hardened his heart pharaoh hardened his heart and then god's like okay well now i'm hardening your heart so it's you, you are given over to you to what you have chosen time and time and time and time again they did not become blind because god spoke through isaiah i want to be clear this wasn't a word that the lord spoke and then it happened uh, but rather, Isaiah spoke because he foresaw their blindness. And that's often what happens with prophecy that is foretelling. It's foreseeing. It's foreseeing um, something that's already come to pass in eternity because God sees the end from the beginning. And he, un you know, he understands that, they, you know, they're going to make this decision. And in his providence and in his kindness and in his goodness and in his mercy, he keeps sending us chances to repent, like, you know, he keeps pouring grace upon us, but eventually time's up, right? We, we live in space and time and time runs out. And then, you know, if we harden ourselves, if we blind ourselves and if we harden our heart and we won't keep our heart soft before the Lord, then the Lord simply reinforces what we have already willingly chosen time and time and time again. So here's my encouragement to you. If you were looking at this going, oh, I don't want to be spiritually blind. Well, my friend, you are in the perfect place. If you do not want to be spiritually blind, if you want to see clearly, if you are searching for God, he's not hiding from your friend. He's not hiding from you. He says, if you seek me, you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. So if your heart is searching for him, he will not hide from you. He will show his face to you. He will show his kindness to you. He will show his nature to you. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So Jesus is my good, my, uh, my little children. Um, it's, it, it's, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And that was manifested through Jesus. And we are now partakers of the divine nature. So we are now in him. So we now get to manifest the kingdom. The kingdom now and not yet. We get to be here manifesting his kingdom. Isn't that exciting? So if you are sitting there going, oh, my goodness, I don't want to be spiritually blind. My friend is you are not and you will not be. But if you willfully choose to turn your, your eye away or, and your, to turn your ear away from hearing that the Spirit of God is speaking, hear, hear um, the warning today, friend. Turn back. Look at him. Behold him. Seek his face. He, is, he will abundantly pardon. He will pour out his wisdom, knowledge and discernment, his heart upon you. You just need to turn and live. Turn and live, my friend. So I sort of pray for you now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that all of those who come, who ask, who seek, and who knock shall receive. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord, that you are turning more and more hearts back to you. I thank you, God, for, for the hearts of those who do not want to have spiritual blindness. And so, Lord, I ask you to continue to remove the scales from their eyes, continue to remove the scales from my eyes, Lord, so that we can see you more clearly remove deception, remove things we've placed in the way, any fleshly thing we've placed between you and seeing you clearly. Remove that now in Jesus' mighty name. We humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that you may exalt us in due season. And we press in and thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. All right, that wraps up my many teachers for the week. First week back in ministry, I've sort of been trying to get the swing of things again. It's been great to have you guys on board. If this has blessed you, please um, like, share, comment, tag a friend. All those things really help. Love and blessing, guys. I will see you next week. All right, toodaloo. Bye.